Good morning. I want to talk a little bit today about uh, Jupiter and Gemini in the year 2024 and what we might expect. So let me see if I can share my screen here. And I have to get rid of a couple of windows so that I can see what's going on. So just bear with me for a minute. And, all right, I think we're good to go. So this is on Jupiter and Gemini in 2024. <clears throat> now, let's look at this little table right at the top. Jupiter is going to move into Gemini on May 25th. Then on June 2nd, it's going to make a trine to Pluto. Jupiter will be in Gemini, Pluto, and Aquarius. On August 19th, it's going to make a square with Saturn. On August, October 12th, it makes a sextile with Chiron, and then another sextile with Chiron on November 2nd. And then on December 24th, it's going to make a square to Saturn. So... The planets that Jupiter is going to be involved with uh, once it enters Gemini are going to be Pluto, Saturn, and Chiron. Now, to understand what's going on, we have to also recognize that these aspects are just going to be continuations of the cycles that began when Jupiter was in conjunction with each of these planets, what we call synodic cycles. So... For instance, Jupiter was conjunct Pluto on November 12th, uh, 2020. That was in Capricorn. Uh, Capricorn has to do with uh, uh, not only traditional things, but also status in society. Uh, Pluto uh, represents power. Uh, Jupiter is uh, expansion and a more liberal frame of mind. Uh, so, what happened around November 12th, 2020? Well, this was uh, very shortly after the 2020, 2020 presidential election when uh, Joe Biden was elected president. And Biden fits in with the nature of Jupiter conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. Uh, as far as Democratic uh, policies go, Biden is more traditional, more middle of the road. Uh, he can handle uh, power. And he has a more expansive, more uh, liberal point of view as represented by uh, Gemini. And so when Jupiter makes a trine with Pluto, uh, we can expect the best of these kinds of qualities to come out. And we'll look, we'll look at the chart uh, for this uh, aspect uh, pretty shortly. Okay, now, what about Jupiter and Saturn? Well, on December 21st, 2020, there was a conjunction of uh, Jupiter with Saturn. These conjunctions usually happen about once every 20 years and uh, represent uh, often social change where we try and once again, try and hit the right balance between expansion and contraction, uh, growth and regulation. But this was conjunction was a little different. It was different because it also represented a transition of these conjunctions uh, occurring now in air signs rather than earth signs. For about the past 200 or so years, these conjunctions had been occurring in earth signs, but now we've begun a cycle uh, that'll last about 300 years where these uh, conjunctions are now going to be happening in air signs. Furthermore, in many ways, this is the beginning of an almost 800 year cycle. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, it's gonna be about 800 years before we get another conjunction of uh, 
Jupiter with Saturn and Aquarius. It's going to be close to 800 years before we get another series of conjunctions and air signs. Like I said, we're going to do air signs for these conjunctions for about the next 300 years, but then they move into fire signs and then to earth signs. And after roughly about 775 years, plus or minus, they finally go back into air signs again. So that's what I mean here when I say this is the begin beginning of an almost 800 year cycle. Now the last conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius occurred in 1405. So that was about 600 years ago. And 1405, that was certainly in the early Renaissance and some historians uh, will use uh, 1400 as uh, the beginning of the Renaissance period in Europe. 1405, by the way, was also a year that China uh, decided to send out large ships to explore the oceans, explore the seas. They wanted to expand beyond their boundaries. And that is in, certainly in line with uh, Jupiter coming into conjunction uh, with Saturn. Okay. Now, I have these dates and more up here. That's what this stuff represents. Uh, different uh, times that we had Jupiter conjunct Saturn. So January 16th, 1405. That's the last time we had Jupiter conjunct Saturn and Aquarius uh, prior to this December 21st, 2020 date uh, when we had, again, Jupiter conjunct Saturn and Aquarius at zero degrees, 29 minutes of Aquarius. Now we're going to go through uh, a series of conjunctions that are part of the current air cycle for Jupiter and Saturn. So we get another uh, conjunction in Aquarius on March 14th, 2020, 2080, January 14th, 2140, April 7th, 2199. And then you can see there is a big gap here. That's because these conjunctions, again, they move into uh, fire signs and then to earth signs again before getting back into air. And then following this big gap, we have our next uh, conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius in the year 2815. Uh, uh, then another one, December 25th, 2874. Another March 19th, 2934. Another January 17th, 1994. And that's as far as I went. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be alive beyond the year 2994. If I am, then I'll extend this uh, table. Okay, now the other planet Jupiter is going to be interacting with by aspect is Chiron. And the sextile is going to be a very pleasant continuation of the conjunction of Jupiter with Chiron that occurred on March 11th, 2023 at 14 degrees, 27 minutes of Aries. And whenever this benefic planet Jupiter comes into conjunction with Chiron, something wonderful always happens that reflects the nature of the sign that uh, the conjunction occurs in. In the past, we've had uh, uh, television perfected, the United Nations come into being, uh, the Beatles coming together, uh, Star Wars, uh, they began filming Star Wars. Uh, J.K. Rowling got the idea for the Harry Potter novels. And in this millennium, uh, during a Jupiter Chiron conjunction, which they were also conjunct Neptune, and that happened in the year that Obamacare came about. And uh, also, I believe that year Obama was nominated for and won the Nobel Peace Prize. He was an inspiration of humanitarianism and compassion around the world. Uh, all things that have to do with uh, 
the sign Aquarius and with uh, Neptune and, and Pisces. So something wonderful always happens when Jupiter is conjunct Chiron. Uh, last year, the day after uh, this conjunction, uh, the movie, uh, everything, everywhere, all at once, uh, they just swept the awards at the Oscars. And that movie is a very spiritual movie. Uh, it's about spiritual warriors, but it's about turning win-lose conflicts into win-win conflicts. I highly recommend watching it. But with uh, the conjunction occurring in Aries, you expect something having to do with individual spirituality and spiritual warriors, and that movie did not disappoint. Okay, now I want to look at charts for some of these dates where we have these trines, squares, and uh, sextals. I'm only going to look at the first square between Jupiter and Saturn and the uh, uh, last sextal here between uh, Jupiter and Chiron. But we'll start with the trine between uh, Jupiter and Pluto, which happens on June 2nd, 2024. And this is a very nice looking chart. What squares you do have are pretty weak. And uh, you've got a lot of trines and sextiles in here. And Mercury conjunct Jupiter, it's making a very lovely trine to Pluto up in Aquarius and Neptune and Pisces is making a sextile to both of them. Now, when Jupiter moves into Gemini, Gemini is all about ideas and thinking and curiosity and figuring things out. That is going to be coupled with the meaning of Pluto in Aquarius, which is about humanitarian concerns and technology and, and group creativity. So, and then with Neptune making sextiles, Neptune adds this element of uh, inspiration, vision, and compassion to the mix. So this is going to kick off a lot of very inspired thinking and creativity. Uh, this can result in a lot of uh, great scientific breakthroughs uh, for the world, a lot of uh, new technologies uh, coming along. Also, it can result in a, uh, an expansion of humanitarian activities and bringing uh, more peace and compassion uh, to people out around the world and people working together in collaboration to come up with creative uh, solutions. So here I have a little summary on the right, ideas, inspiration, technology, group creativity, and power to the people. Now, the last time that there was a trine between Jupiter and Gemini with uh, Pluto in Aquarius, that was in the summer of 1787. And it was during that summer that uh, at a constitutional convention in America, uh, the United States Constitution was debated, put together, and then finally approved so that it could be sent to the states to be ratified. But the kind of high thinking represent here by Jupiter and Gemini trying Pluto and Aquarius. That is so clearly reflected in the construction of our constitution. Jupiter and Gemini gives us lofty ideas. And Pluto and Aquarius, remember another thing that represents is a transfer of power from individuals to the people. And the constitution spelled out exactly how that was going to work. So this is a very, very nice uh, chart to have at the time uh, that this trine becomes exact. It's gonna kick off some really good things. Now, the first square between Jupiter and Saturn, that's gonna be on August 19th, uh, 2024. And you can just look at this chart and see, it's not quite so nice. We got a couple of T squares in here for goodness sakes. Wow. Anytime you have a square, that's 
that's kind of a decision point, a turning point of sorts. That's always a point where you take the two drives represented by those planets and you ask our, something inside of us, ask ourselves, do we want to continue in this direction with these two drives or we just want to break it off and go in separate directions? In this case, because it's Jupiter and Saturn, the question is, do we want more freedom or do we want more control, more regulation? the balance between uh, growth and regulation are being questioned uh, at this point. Now, what's really interesting is August 19th, 2024, that's also the day that the Democrats National Convention will kick off. And when you look at the planets and aspects involved, it looks like it's going to be a very lively debate at the uh, convention. Uh, probably a lot of wrangling between uh, Democratic liberals or progressives and more traditional or more conservative Democrats. Those who want to go far left, those who want to go back to the center, or even maybe even a little uh, to the right of center. And the fact that Jupiter is also conjunct Mars down here well, that is probably going to result in, as I say, very spirited debate and exchange of ideas. And we also have the planet Uranus making a square uh, to the uh, Sun-Mercury conjunction here and to the moon over here. So there may be some disruption during the convention uh, some people may be a little bit more revolutionary, dis disruptive in some way. Either way, as I say, probably going to be a very spirited debate, a lot of different ideas, a lot of discussion over what direction uh, the Democratic Party should go in. Uh, that'll be very interesting. Now, since uh, I looked at uh, this date, which turned out to be the starting day for the Democrats uh, National Convention. Let's go back and take a look at uh, the day on which the Republican National Convention starts. This is interesting too, because on this date, uh, July 15th, 2024, there will be an exact conjunction between Mars and Uranus. Now, that by itself can be very explosive. But on the other hand, you have very favorable aspects that day. You don't have the squares and T-squares that will characterize the uh, Democratic Convention. Thus, what I'm expecting, um, I'm expecting the Republican Convention uh, to be filled with a lot of ideas that to me might, and others might seem very radical, uh, very combative, revolutionary, not necessarily in a good sense, but I think everyone at the convention will be on board uh, with what's going on. So even though they may come out with a platform or uh, positions that uh, I don't like, the convention itself, I think will probably proceed uh, much more smoothly. Uh, people very much in lockstep with one another as opposed to the Democratic Convention, which looks like will be all over the place when it comes to ideas and uh, possible positions that can be put into the platform. Okay, let's move on now. I want to talk about Jupiter's sextile Chiron. Uh, whenever Jupiter and Chiron are in conjunction, that always brings out the sweeter side of Chiron. Chiron is really a drive with us to transcend the visible world, to go beyond what is visible, to realms that aren't so visible uh, to our eyes. It urges spiritual transcendence. Uh, it's just that if we have these hard shells around us, those shells have to be cracked first uh, before that light can enter us. And that's where the wounding comes in. But whenever Jupiter is conjunct Chiron, you usually get something very sweet and very transcendent and very enduring. 
since Jupiter will be making a sextile to Chiron, this is going to be kind of a continuation of further development in that sweetness. Also, if we use the one degree orb, I believe Jupiter is going to be sextiling Chiron from about mid-September through the end of November. So that is going to be very nice. That's also a period, a, another period this year when it will be easier for us to experience some kind of spiritual transcendence. Anyway, the sweet transcendence side of Chiron will likely manifest at this time, and which is just three days before the presidential election. So a lot of these same aspects are going to be in effect during our presidential election this fall. And there is certainly an opposition between Pluto and Mars, which is very ominous and can be very explosive. But look at all the trines and sextiles we have, a grand trine, uh, smaller triangles here. There's so many good aspects at this time. I think that is going to overwhelm uh, whatever violence that Pluto opposition Mars might portend. So I think harmony is going to be the predominant uh, influence at this time. Uh, things will be feeling good because Jupiter sextal Chiron brings out the best. And this can, the fall can be a very good time uh, for everyone for spiritual growth if we apply ourselves in that direction. Okay, it looks like that is it for this slideshow. So let me stop sharing. Whoops, you can't see me here. Let me put my camera back real quickly. And let's see, there I am. And so that's it. Uh, that's my take on Jupiter and Gemini. I hope you enjoyed it. And I uh, hope all is well, and I hope you join me again. Uh, for now, I'll just say so long and be well.